All right, so the next step in building rapport is to build credibility. Now there's plenty of people that I like, but not all of those people are necessarily credible. So there's several people that come to mind that I definitely really, really like, but I wouldn't necessarily want to do business with. So although I like them, I'm not sure they would necessarily perform well. So when it comes to credibility, you want to be like Walter Cronkite here. You do not want to be like the guy on the right here. Not a very credible looking guy. So you want to be likable, but you also want people to know that you know your stuff. Alright, so here are the issues that we're going to address. We're going to address language, brand, partners, third parties, confidence, and storytelling. Then we're going to talk about some questions that might be asked, such as how long have you been doing this and what you will pay. So let's start with language. Your tone, your pitch, your vocabulary, and your patterns. So we already talked about this, but you want to make sure that your patterns match them. So people like and trust people who are very similar to themselves. So obviously don't try and be that person, but we want to sort of uh, imitate or again mirror the language that that person is using, the kind of way that they speak uh, and their overall kind of enthusiasm, for example. So by mirroring the person's language, tone, pitch, vocabulary, and patterns, things like this, it's going to definitely make them feel more comfortable, uh, and you can kind of pick up things from the language and sort of style of language that they use as well. You can pick up on things like their enthusiasm. If they're enthusiastic, you want to be enthusiastic. If they're a little bit more serious, for example, then you want uh, to keep sort of a more serious, more professional tone. Uh, if there's someone who likes to crack jokes, uh, maybe you can throw a joke in there. Uh, so you just have to pick up on those kinds of things, and that's going to help you uh, to be able to uh, ease the tension between your communication. Now, while we do want to sort of match the language and tone style of uh, that person that you're speaking with, you also want to make sure that you um, or making it very apparent to the person that you do know what you're talking about in terms of real estate. So you want to make sure that um, you do show confidence in your understanding and knowledge of real estate as well. So I'm going to talk about things like the construction. I'm going to talk about things like the foundation. I'm going to talk about what type of foundation it is. I'm going to talk about when that foundation was used, what type of roof it is, and you don't have to necessarily know this stuff off the top of your head. You can look this stuff up online uh, and really build your uh, knowledge just very easily by doing some research. You can watch videos on construction, things like this on uh, even places like YouTube online. Next, we want to talk about brand. So having a strong brand is a great way to build credibility. So you can see here we have some examples like 800 Sell Now, Johnson Investment, which are all great. But even if you have just your name, that's fine as well. As long as you know your stuff and you're able to close deals, then it's not a problem. So brand is something that's going to just offer you a little bit more instant credibility. So you don't have to go as far to prove yourself. The brand just kind of proves it for you. So you can always use the partners. So for example, I'll say that my partners have done hundreds of deals. And that's actually true. So that's really easy to use as a credibility piece. Also, another thing that I use pretty commonly is I will uh, just kind of throw out there that uh, I'm just working with a third party here. I'm just kind of a foot soldier. I'm just putting in an offer for this investment group that I work for. We've got a few private investors and they kind of just use me to do all the footwork. So this is going to kind of take some of that pressure away when you're communicating. So the next thing we're going to talk about is confidence. So if you're confident, then they're going to have confidence in you. If you speak confidence, if you use strong language, you don't want to sound weak or unsure of yourself when you're communicating. So always make sure that you're speaking with confidence. You want to make them aware that you are able to close and that you're confident about that. Even if you're not confident, just exude that confidence, whether you believe it or not, and they're going to believe it as well. Next, we want to talk about storytelling. So when you're trying to state facts like, hey, I close deals, uh, it's a little bit difficult to do that without storytelling. Giving a fact like that or stating something like that, um, oftentimes people are not going to believe you. So one way to get around this is by use of storytelling. So instead of just stating a fact, come up with a story. Think of something that's happened in your life uh, that's going to kind of demonstrate something that you would state as a fact. So instead of just saying something like, oh, I'm an honest person, think of a story where you did something honest um, and, and kind of convey that to them. That's going to help them 
um, with trust. It's going to make them trust you more and feel more confident in speaking with you. So next, let's look at questions that you might get asked. So the first one is how long you've been doing this. And this is actually something that I don't get asked that often, but it is definitely a question that could come up. So you can be honest about this. You can tell someone that you're brand new, that you've just started doing this. And I'm working with some guys that have been doing this for a really long time. So if you're working with us, uh, you're going to have buyers and you want to make sure that they know that. If you have a really great deal, I'm available to look at it. My team is available to look at it. So you have a full network of people at your disposal. And then the final question that you're going to probably see is, uh, what will you pay? Now, if you just come out and throw out sort of a random number, you're not going to seem very credible. To be credible, you want to tell them, at the end of the day, I don't want to give you a random number without being able to back it up. So letting them know that you're going to take your time to really give them uh, a fair offer is going to be a lot more credible than just, again, trying to throw a number out there and get them a quick answer. So these are, again, just some ways to build your rapport and to build your credibility.